Happy Hump Day, everybody. Welcome to another episode, another interview, another chat here on Full Out Chats. I am your host, Steve Solberg, and we have another great one for you today. About to join us uh, will be Ryan O'Connor also known as Ryan Martin back in the day. Uh, she's going to be joining us here uh, in uh, about a minute uh, to talk about her life. I know she's going to have a very interesting story for everybody. Uh, so as they say, before we can go, obviously, full out, we need some music. So as every coach says, let's do it one more time. Let's go full out. Are you Full out chaps, you know what time it is. Yo, oh, 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 you oh, 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 the new head cheerleading coach at Western Kentucky. And let me find Ryan here and we'll have her join us. Hello. Ryan. Hello, how are ya? I'm like, am I too short? I'm like nope. <laughs> yeah, you can lower it maybe a little bit if you want, if you want to get your uh, a little bit bigger uh, <laughs> view. I'm there like we go. I'm close. I'm moving. <laughs> How's everything? Uh, it's crazy. Our yeah. AC just went out, and so we're in this little apartment in Bowling Green. It's like 80 degrees in here, but I'm ready. I'm excited. No, it... <laughs> can you hear me okay? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, you're, you, yep you sound and look perfect, so we are good to go. And uh, again, I thank you. Uh, I know uh, you're a new mom and everything and, you know, trying to get all that. And, uh, but uh, before we get to that part of your story, you know, like as always, I, I love to just give a platform for people to kind of uh, learn about you. But I think what your, I think your story is going to be very interesting because uh, we'll get to that here in a bit, but we kind of know about your life because of the whole reality TV thing that you've been involved with. And uh, as I said, I kind of consider you one of the first, or if not the first, like cheer liberty that we ever kind of had. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, but uh, kind of, you know, but start from the beginning. Obviously, your mom's a, a huge influence in the cheer community also. So I don't think cheerleading was going to avoid you ever. But kind of just start from the beginning, you know, your, your, uh, how you grew up, your family, and, and just kind of go from there. Yeah, um, so my mom uh, has been coaching. This is actually starting her 34th year as a wow. coach. Um, her 31st at Dunbar, but um, she coached at Bryan Station Junior High in Lexington before then. Um, so she actually took the job at Dunbar, uh, while she was pregnant with me. That's when the school was opening. So I'm like the same age as Dunbar is. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely in my blood. And I always like to say, you know, I didn't have a choice, you know, I had mm -hmm. it here, but you know, in reality, I played a lot of sports and my mom, you know, my parents would have supported whatever I chose to do. Um, I think I chose cheerleading because of my mom and I saw how happy it made my mom, you know, I saw how excited she was every time she went to practice or a game. And I saw how much love cheerleading brought her. And I thought, I want to be a part of that. You know, whatever makes my mom happy, I, I just love to do that. So I started around three years old. Mm -hmm. um, my first competitive team, I think I was five at okay. uh, Pep Club All-Stars in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, we were a pretty small gym and uh, our practices were more probably fun than um, intense and really like looking for, oh yeah, oh my God, that's a good one. <laughs> um, you know, we, we, had, we had a lot of fun and that's before, you know, there weren't levels. It was just like, hey, five, you're age five through like middle school, y'all are this junior team. And then it was like the senior team was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I did pep club from the time I was five until my junior year of high school actually. And so I met a lot of great people there, a lot of great coaches that, um, you know, you probably know. Um, I know when Jared was on last week, he was talking about Pep Club. Um, a lot of, you know, former UK cheerleaders um, came through there. Mark Coleman was actually my coach <laughs> at Pep Club. Oh my gosh, that's a per me to point that show. Um, <laughs> I'm like, that bothers me in that picture. Um, but yeah, so I did All-Stars. I played a lot of sports growing up. I, I have a younger brother and I have two parents who are I always joke and say I didn't have parents. I had two coaches, mm -hmm. um, which I think is, you know, maybe why I am the, the coach and the person that I am 
today. Um, you know, I think my mom was pretty hard on me. I think my mom's still pretty hard on me. Mom, if she's watching. Um, but I'm grateful for that now. And I think our relationship is even stronger now because of that. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, I feel like every time I came home, you know, I'd, be, I'd see other kids like coming off the competition mat and their parents were just like, oh my God, great job. You know, my mom's like, well, so-and-so over here didn't do this. You were count late on that, you know? And I'm like, I thought we did good, you know? <laughs> um, so I think she, you know, I, I, I've enjoyed having, um, you know, my mom is a coach and um, it was really tough at times, especially in high school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cheerleader nation kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, but I had my mom as a teacher too. Uh, so my mom was my teacher. Um, she was my mom at home. She was also my assistant tennis coach. <laughs> um, you know, and she was my coach for cheerleading. So I just felt like we never got a break sometimes. Um, we were just always together, but I, I, looking back, it's really nice that my mom was a part of, you know, pretty much every major moment in my life. You know, I didn't have to say, oh, mom, this happened at practice today, or like, you know, this, oh, this is how I'm feeling about competition. You know, my mom knew exactly what was going on and could share in those moments with me. So now I'm, I'm really grateful for, for, you know, all the closeness that we had. And I think, I think it's just made our relationship even better. Uh, um, you mentioned tennis, but I was going to say, did, did you do anything else besides cheerleading? Yeah, I, uh, I, well, you know, I played pretty much everything when I was younger. Um, my, my dad actually had me on his, uh, on the guys basketball team and the guys baseball team because he wanted to coach me. <laughs> but my name was Ryan and I kind of just, you know, blended in, I guess. I don't know. But so I played, uh, you know, guys basketball, church league, and um, I played baseball up until I had to pick between softball or baseball. And my dad was like, ah, we'll just pull you out of that. Um, so I didn't do baseball much longer, but I swam. Um, I was a pretty good swimmer. Actually, I really enjoyed swim team. Um, they always tried to get me to dive and I wish I would have tried it at some point, but I, I just swam. Um, unfortunately, you know, when I got to high school, like my nemesis would be like six feet tall. And I'm like, dang, one of her strokes equals like six mine. I'm like, yep. a sport. Um, but I ran cross country. I played golf um, and I played tennis um, for Dunbar. So I did all those sports at Dunbar um, actually. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so again, we are here with uh, Ryan O'Connor, also known as Ryan Martin from back in the day. Uh, if you have any questions for Ryan, we will have a Q&A later. At the bottom of the screen, you're going to see a question mark that looks like a deck of cards. And just tap on that and send us some questions. And Ryan will be happy to answer those uh, later. So um, you know, obviously, you uh, like I said, the interesting thing about you, Ryan, is you kind of grew up in the public eye of, of cheerleading. People uh, have known you since, since your Dunbar days because of the cheerleader nation television show, which was, re it was really the first television show about competitive cheerleading. Um, yeah. so kind of talk about that experience, kind of talk about how that came about and, you know, why Dunbar was chosen and kind of how your mom, um, kind of, you know, decided to, to do that show. Sure. So actually it started, um, Back in 2001, um, Dunbar was on True Life, I'm a Cheerleader. Do you remember those True Life? Oh my goodness, yes, you're right, yeah. yes. So mm -hmm. We were like one of the first um, one of the first True Lifes on MTV. And the reason they picked Dunbar is because, uh, you know, the producer, her name was Lori Garion, and she was just looking for a school in Kentucky because she just knew like, okay, cheerleading in Kentucky, like, mm -hmm. it's crazy, you gotta start there. Started in Lexington, and Dunbar just happened to be one of the only schools that hadn't had tryouts yet. And so that's really how we got selected. You know, she reached out and was like, I would love to do a documentary um, on MTV uh, about cheerleading. You know, would you be interested? Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, eh, MTV, I don't really know. Yeah. You know, gotta, you know, and you want to protect your, your program and you. And, um, you know, it's a lot to open up your, your life and your team um, to somebody like that that you don't know and that doesn't know cheerleading. Mm -hmm. um, but she met with Lori and they just really hit it off. My mom really trusted her and felt like she wanted to showcase, you know competitive cheerleading and what mm -hmm. we really do. And so that was a 45 minute um, episode on MTV. Mm -hmm. um, I was in fifth grade and I met Lori then. And, you know, I was like such a little ham. I was like, Oh, film me doing this. Watch me. You know, I'm doing my routine in the back. <laughs> and we made up our own meat. Like we made our own mix, um, you know, on a cassette and we were like, you have to watch us. And so Lori was like, I'm going to come back when your daughter cheers for you. And we kind of thought, yeah, okay, sure. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, so True Life did really well. Lori actually got a pretty big promotion and, and got to move out to LA from New York. And she reached back out my freshman year of high school and was like, hey, I'm serious. Like, 
I want to come back. Can I do it? And so my mom, you know, started going through the process. And I think if it wasn't Lori again, I don't think my mom would have said yes. But I think just building that relationship with her, mm -hmm. um, you know, and knowing that she, she was a great person and really wanted to, you know, show us in the best light possible, um, and, you know, show true stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my mom said, okay, come on back. So she, they filmed through my sophomore year at Dunbar, which was one of my, one of my favorite years, one of my favorite teams at Dunbar. Um, and it's, it's hard, you know, it's, I, I've seen it now from the coach's side too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for the, this, you know, 10 or eight girls who are featured, you know, you're really signing up to do like a full-time job because, yeah. you know, you're not only being, you know, followed maybe a little more closely throughout practice, but you're also staying after practice and you're doing a four hour interview or you're coming early or you're, you know, meeting up with them so they can film you and your boyfriend playing Yahtzee. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> We weren't really wanting to play Yahtzee, but we, you know, had to do that. Um, but, you know, I, I think um, uh, Lori just did a really good job, and it was, it was just so much fun to get to know them that year. Um, and we stayed in touch with her, and that's who actually was the producer of the show that we did with Ole Miss and Dunbar, too. So we've, we've done a lot with them and um, stayed in touch with them. Lori's married with a daughter now, and we hope she'll choose cheerleading, too. Uh -huh. um, we like to – we visited them in California. And so oh, cool. We, it's opened up a lot of great – um, relationships for, for me um, and then with with that relationship with Lori and her family as well. Was uh, remind, was Cheerleader Nation also on MTV? No, Cheerleader Nation was on Lifetime. It was Lifetime also, yeah, okay. It was an eight-part um, eight series. Uh, gosh, I'm like, what year was that? 2006, I think, mm -hmm. um, 2005. I was 15 going on 16 um, then, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, like I said, a lot of hard work, but it's really special now that I can go back and, like, watch that, and I can – you know, see things that I might have forgotten about, you know, and remember times with my teammates, my 16th birthday party was featured on there. Um, so that's really special too, to go back and see everything that my mom did behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you don't realize that. And I'm sure I'll talk about that too, just as her watching her coach, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't realize all that went into planning that birthday party because, you know, I just show up and like, yeah, it's a party. I'm 16. Yeah. Think about other people. And, you know, seeing that now I'm like, wow, like my mom, really wanted to make my day special for me and, mm -hmm. and my teammates and all my you know friends that came and it just really meant a lot when i mean i could just imagine in high school that the cheerleading team is being featured on national television kind of i mean how did, did it affect your just your kind of your high school year at all kind of being uh, for you know being followed and kind of being featured on national television i think um i would say probably one of the hardest parts was honestly maybe dealing with your own team you know when you are maybe someone i'm already the coach's daughter you know i've already got girls who maybe don't you know like me because of that or don't want to say things around me because you know she's my mom mm -hmm. and then i've got you know and then i'm one of the featured people and it's you know we're girls and you know we're je you know jealous and those kind of things came out i think sometimes that was hard was just you know salim and my mom did a great job of reminding us like Hey, our goal is not this TV show, you know, remember our goals and remember your why and, you know, stay focused on that. And you just kind of have to put like your blinders on and just stay focused on that vision. And I think like vision is something I always talk about as a coach and in my personal life as well. If you don't, you know, we steer where we stare. It's one of my favorite quotes. So you got to have a vision. And Salim and my mom are always really good at keeping us, you know, on our path. Um, and I, I want to say it was probably worse with the college, you know, like, lately because mm -hmm. social media wasn't you know huge then you know mm -hmm. i had facebook and that, yep. was about, that was all there was and i think you know doing reality shows now and just seeing the amount of publicity our, our kids get now it might have made it harder but i think in that time um it, it was nothing but but positive um i think for the cheerleading world for me personally it led to a lot of job um opportunities it made me change my major in college um so I'm really grateful. I think I had, you know, nothing but positive experience from, from that time in high school. I think the hardest part was maybe just, you know, reminding, you know, our team of, of our goal that year. Again, we're here with Ryan O'Connor, uh, head coach at Western Kentucky. And uh, if you have any questions for Ryan, we'll be doing a Q&A later. Um, and at the bottom, just tap on that question mark and send us some questions and Ryan will be happy to answer them later. Uh, so let's talk about that next transition in your life. You graduate from Dunbar. Now, if I'm not mistaken, undefeated, right? You won nationals every year? I'm not, I'm not... I did. I know. I'm, I say it all the time. I'm the luckiest, the luckiest cheerleader in the world. I have great coaches and great teammates. Um, 
four uh, team titles and a partner, a group stunt title too. So I was very fortunate to leave Dunbar like that. Uh, so undefeated at high school nationals, and then it's time to go to college. Talk about, you know, that. Um, and But again, I think it's different for you be a little bit just because, uh, just to say it, you're, like, you're Ryan Martin, you're cheerleader nation, you're, you know, you're Donna's daughter, you know, all this stuff. So hi, how was the picking out a college for you and kind of that process for you? Well, my junior year, I actually decided I was going to play college tennis. Oh, um, okay. You know, I think, I think that was after like three years, you know, just being with mom all the time. And, you know, I think every cheerleader has a point maybe or with any sport, you know, you kind of get that like, maybe I just can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I'm done. Maybe I want to yep. try something else. And I felt like tennis was an area that was kind of like my lane, you know, where like cheerleading was already so defined, especially in Lexington by Donna Martin that, you know, I was like, well, in tennis, it could just be Ryan Martin, you know, I could mm -hmm. do my so I did think about that. I think maybe I said it out loud also just to frustrate my mom, too. Um, <laughs> I'm not lie, you know, 16, 17 years old, definitely wanted to cause some problems. So, um, but by my senior year, you know, Celine was, was always kind of in my ear about it. Um, Tony Nash was coaching at Moorhead. I, I, I thought a lot about Moorhead. Um, but honestly, growing up in Lexington, you know, and, and my family, I mean, my grandma made a half court shot for, to go win tickets to the UK. You know, <laughs> Kentucky is like everything, you know, I'm growing mm -hmm. up 10 minutes from the university and I'm a cheerleader. Like, where else am I going to go? Like, I'm mm -hmm. going to go. To, that's my goal. And so I think, you know, senior year is when I really started to, um, you know, attend. I mean, I've been attending clinics for years, but I really started to focus on um, Kentucky and, you know, reaching out to Jomo, um, reaching out to David McDowell, who was, you know, previously coaching at UK, but also worked at Dunbar at Pet Club. He was one of our tumbling coaches. Um, and, and Jeremy Lumpkin, you know, someone I was doing privates with and asking, you know, how do I, how do I get to be on UK? And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I visited Alabama and I thought, oh, maybe I want to, you know, maybe I want to come here. And my mm -hmm. mom was pretty much like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to UK. And so um, I did think about, you know, I did think about Alabama and Moorhead, but then you know, with my parents, you know, saying like, you know, you're going to give at least UK a shot. I really didn't have an option. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so thankful for the time that I had at UK and everything that I learned um, from that year. I definitely do not look back and think like, wow, I wish I would have gone straight to Alabama. Where mm -hmm. I ended up, you know, definitely glad that I that I did get the opportunity to cheer for UK for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, so you uh, you study your freshman year at Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And then end up going, as a lot of people know, to Alabama. Yeah. Uh, and so talk about that transition from going, uh, I mean, literally, like you said, 10 minutes from home, you're a yep. homebody kind of, you're, you know, grew up in, in Kentucky to moving to Tuscaloosa. Um, my first year at UK was really hard. Um, mm -hmm. And not hard in like the, uh, it was hard and I gave up hard. Mm -hmm. um, it really, I think sometimes you put people or programs or coaches and, you know, up on a pedestal. And, um, you know, the only person that really needs to be up there is, is God because everyone else is just human and they're just going to let you down. And I think I had just built up this image in my head. And then when it didn't go the way that I planned, I was like, like, I'm heartbroken. Like, what do I do? You mm -hmm. know, I, I met with Jomo so many times, you know, like, what can I do? How can I get better? And to be honest, um, you know, Jomo and I are great friends now, but he pretty much just said, it's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're, you're not going to compete here. Um, and I, that was probably the first time that I'd ever really felt um, like failure, you know, and people think that's such a bad thing, but it's not, you know, it was good that I learned to, you know, feel that and, you know, think about, okay, well, so what's next? Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, okay, I, I want to be here. I would do anything to be here, but I've been told it's not going to happen. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. I, uh, Celine connected me with David, who was uh, just taking the head job at Alabama. He had uh, been at Florida, and then he had spent one year mm -hmm. in Alabama. You know, and I start talking to him, and I'm like, hey, I, you know, kind of interested in transferring. Never been to a clinic, you know, anything. But I don't really know a lot about Alabama, except that you're the coach, and I think you're awesome. Mm-hmm. So I met with Jomo, um, you know, I was very honest with him, just like he was honest with me. Like mm -hmm. I said, I think we had a great relationship. I um, met with him and Josh Adams, who was the, the coach, and, mm -hmm. and Tilan as well, and was just like, um, you know, told them I wanted to go visit Alabama. Um, and was just honest. And they were like, you know, thank you for being honest with us. Yes, you have our blessing, you know, go visit Alabama. Um, so I went there for a weekend. Um, my mom actually uh, came with me, and, um, you know, I met with David, and I just was like, I've 
I want him to be my coach. You know, I don't care who's on the team. I don't care what Tuscaloosa looks like. Um, I still never went to a clinic. I still didn't really tour campus. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know much about college football, to be honest, because, like, college basketball was, like, everything. And so yep. I'm like, Alabama basketball don't really know much except for the CM Newton connection with the coaching. And I was just like, well, here I am. If I can come to Alabama, I'm there. So I go to tryouts. <laughs> And oh, well, I guess let's back up. My mom actually said no. <laughs> like, okay, so I meet with my parents. I'll never forget the dinner where I was like, and I'm going to transfer to Alabama. My mom was like, no. Like, well, I'm actually not asking because I already figured out uh, academically how I can, you know, get a scholarship, hopeful cheer scholarship, and, I, you know, how I can pay for school. I found someone to live with. Uh, I've already done this, so I'm just, like, kind of telling you. And that was, mm -hmm. like, the first time, and I was, like, waiting for, like, and it was really hard. You know, I go to trials. I don't know a soul. Um, David set me up with someone, uh, Caitlin Seabrook, to live with, and she was, like, my first, you know, friend, and Josh Adkins and Terry Cox were there at Alabama, and they helped me um, through tryouts. And I remember meeting with David and I was like, okay, I've added this up. I can only afford to come here if I make the Crimson Squad. There was, you know, two co-ed teams at that time. I was like, if I make the Crimson Squad and if I do this. And I think some other coaches would have promised you something or would have, you know, told you what you wanted to hear maybe to get you to their program. And I will never forget David just being like, oh, well, you better have a good trial. And I was like, oh, shoot, I better have a good trial. Mm -hmm. I'm here and like, I might not make, I might not be able to come. And so I'm like, oh gosh, Jomo, maybe I could, I still come to UK. And he's like, no, you know, you said, <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, well, I better have a good tryout, you know? So thankfully I did. And I, um, there were only eight girls on the Crimson squad and I was the only new one. And I was so grateful that David, you know, took a chance on me when, you know, maybe other coaches had said, you know, it's not going to happen here. So forever grateful for, for David, just um, starting my journey at Alabama. Um, I will forever love him in that program. So you go to Bama, you, you do make uh, the Crimson Squad, you get, you get the scholarship you needed to financially make it happen. And obviously Bama, not only known for their great uh, competition, obviously their unbelievable game day, uh, yeah. you know, Bryant Denny Stadium. I, I've never been, but I would love to go to a Bama game sometime. I heard oh, it's oh. unbelievable. Yeah. I know it's hard because you're busy on weekends. <laughs> I, usually my weekends are booked. <laughs> yeah. uh, but can I talk about the, I guess maybe the culture shock? I'm sure there was a little bit. Uh, kind of, like you said, moving away from home, going to Alabama, not really knowing many people. Nothing's guaranteed. And uh, kind of just talk about that transition. And also, um, you know, the tr like you said, you know, definitely UK is more basketball country where you're, you're yeah. in Bama where it is football it's all yeah. about bamba football so kind of talk about that transition a lot of culture shock in year one and you know david would say that too um you know he reached out to me several times throughout that year and really encouraged me because he could tell i was having a really tough time um you know i i moved into an apartment with um the one senior girl um on the team and um we you know our friends but we weren't like we didn't like hit it off we we're like besties right away I, I'm the girl who's from UK, you know, like the rival school. And they're all kind of suspicious of like why I'm even there um, in the first place. And so, um, and I also think, you know, kind of changing the mindset um, of Alabama cheerleading. Um, that's where I felt like Celine thought that I could, you know, possibly be, you know, help. And that's where David, you know, saw me too. I don't think I was ever the most skilled, um, but I think that I always worked hard. You know, I always tried to think about putting the team first. Um, I remember, you know, our team, you know, maybe talking about other teams and being like, dang, they're doing this, they're doing that. And I was like, hey, like, let's go ahead and like stop talking about other teams and like, let's just focus on like Bama. Like, let's do us. Let's talk about us. And I will never forget like the looks that I got, like that first practice where I said that. And I was like, Oh, okay. I'll shut up. I'm a, to, you know, going through freshman year number two, which is, was really hard. You know, you work hard your freshman year and you expect sophomore year, you know, you get to, you're comfortable, you know, the band chance, you know how everything works. And so I had freshman year number two where I'm like, okay, keep your mouth shut. Just do your job. When I wanted to make an impact right away, I felt mm -hmm. like I had to just like shut up, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. From year one. And so I was just like, all right, I'm just going to learn, you know, Alabama here. Um, the first practice at Cheer Authority, Chris has talked about Cheer Authority, that gym that's where we practice a lot. And I, um, we started doing the fight song. And everyone knew that we didn't do the fight song at trials. So they made up one that was like, like really hard, you know, that we all had to learn. So we like, okay, David's like, let's go through the fight song. And I'm like, 
did we did we learn the part? Did we learn that? I don't know that. And he's like, oh, everyone else has been to clinic, so they already know it. And I'm like. I'm seriously the only girl on Crimson or White Squad that didn't know the fight song. And if you've seen the Alabama fight song, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, I'm turning in a circle. I'm doing high. I'm like, we didn't do this at UK. We didn't do this at Dunbar. And so I was so defeated. I think that first, that first practice, um, my partner and I were like, we, we were like falling on a walk-in. Like I was so you know, stressed with the fight song. I was like, this is a mistake. I shouldn't have come here. You know, and David just always was like reaching out and like, just hang in there. Like first year's the hardest, just hang in there. Keep, you know, doing what you're doing. I'm so grateful. I kept the Christmas card actually that he wrote me um, my freshman year. And I always just keep it and like look back on it when I'm having a rough time. And I'm like, you know, he believed in me when others didn't and he encouraged me. And I write Christmas cards now, um, you know, to all of my kids, you know, mascots, both programs. I write, I, I spend the time just to write a Christmas card for every one of them because I remember how much that impacted me. Um, that freshman year. Um, also, speaking of sports culture shock, yes, I will never forget, like, my first football game. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, Mom and Dad, like, these people are – well, first of all, my mom didn't come to the first football game. <laughs> so she's still mad at me at this point. Like, freshman year – or first year at Bama, she's still mad. So my dad and my Uncle Mark come, and I am, like, blown away. I'm like, there are like 100,000 people in this stadium and they are crazy. Mm -hmm. And I was, I remember explaining it to my mom. I was like, it's like basketball. It's like UK basketball here. And that is probably the, the best way that I could explain it to someone who's been from Kentucky and doesn't mm -hmm. understand that, that football. I mean, they travel, they're loud, they're passionate, they're a little crazy. You know, you hate them if you're not a part of them. Um, you know, and I kind of had that experience with basketball and then was just on that side for football. And then my parents came to basketball and we're like, what are we going to do? We don't have tickets ahead of time. It's, it's the day of the game. We're never going to get a ticket. And I was mm -hmm. like, guys, you can walk up to Coleman Coliseum and buy a $12 ticket today, like mm -hmm. right before tip off. And my parents were so confused. They're like, no, <laughs> they like, no, no, stop. <laughs> we needed to buy these on StubHub like two months ago. Like there's no way. Um, so definitely like, like the culture shock with that. And I think um, the best thing about being in Tuscaloosa for me um, might have been just not being Donna Martin's daughter and not that that's a negative thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think just like, and I encourage everyone, you know, to go to school away, you know, I, I became so independent. I got to, you know, be Ryan Martin and not, you know, in school, I was always Miss Martin's daughter, the coach's daughter, you know, and it was such a great thing. It brought me, you know, so much it did, but at the same time, I wanted to just figure out who I was maybe without that. And I think Tuscaloosa offered me that where, where Lexington didn't. So you're at Alabama. Oh, once again, everybody who's joining us late, uh, looks like we have a good amount of viewers. We're, we're up here with uh, Ryan O'Connor, uh, the head coach at Western Kentucky, which we'll get to that part of the story here in a bit. Um, so what did you study at Alabama? Um, I actually double majored. Um, I was a journalism major and an American studies major. Okay. Um, American studies was not by choice. It was because that's where I could get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. um, there were only eight people um, in, my, in that major. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so and, and I and they were all very into American studies and I was like, Ooh, I'm just here so I can afford school and mm. so it, I felt like I we didn't help the cheerleader stereotype maybe in some of those classes. Yeah. Because they were in like music theory and I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm really struggling. Uh -huh. The blonde cheerleader and I'm like, Dang it, I hate that <laughs> but journalism was what I was passionate about and that actually came from my time with Cheerleader Nation and mm -hmm. that opening up so many, you know, outlets uh, for me to write for magazines and, and public, you know, mm -hmm. do public speaking. And that's when I decided I wanted to be Aaron Andrews. But, you know, it didn't work out, but it's okay. So you graduate from Bama in three or four years. How many years are you there? I Three and a half. I graduated in December. Okay. So, yeah. uh, well, first, let's talk about how, um, as I said to uh, Ben Schreiber yesterday when he was at Delaware, you, at Bama, you, as I would say, slayed the dragon. You were able to beat Kentucky yeah. uh, and win a national championship at Alabama. Talk about that, that experience. Oh, man, that is, that is one of the best moments uh, of my cheerleading life, for sure. Um, but that was my second year at Bama in 2011. And, man, we just had a special team. And I talk about that all the time with my teams. Like, it's not um, – I look back on, yes, that year was memorable because we won, but that year is memorable because of the people that made up that team. Um, we just had a special bond from the beginning of the year, and we knew that, like, we were going to have a great season. Um, so, we, you know, we had a great season, you know, all year. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know the story. I'm sure some do, but we had a teammate who actually lost 
um, his father was battling cancer um, throughout two days. And he, we were in the airport about to get on the plane for Orlando and um, Caleb, he gets a call that, you know, his dad has just passed. And we're like, you gotta go be with your dad, like to forget cheerleading, you know, like that's how great I think that team was. Yes, we were all competitive, but like nothing comes before like you being home with your family. And I'm quite sure you guys knew like, we have a chance, we're good. Yeah, oh no, it, <laughs> yes. But exactly, and that's why we were like, I, I think that's why he was even willing to go to Orlando when he should have probably, you know, should have been home with dad, you know, but he was like, no, like I'm not missing, I'm not missing nationals. And so we're about to board the plane. He gets that call and we are all like surrounding him and his brother who was on Shelton. Um, and we're like, please go be with your family. Like, don't worry about cheerleading. And we get on the plane and we go, but it's like, it's like such a silent ride. Like that plane flight was so, like I'll just never forget that moment of just like, it was just silent, you know, it wasn't the normal heading to nationals of like, you know, the talking to each other on the plane, like, what are we going to do? Can't wait to eat that all-star food, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so excited about the trip. We were all just like, you know, praying for Caleb and, you know, thinking, wow, like he just lost his dad. Um, we get there and we've, you know, we've, we're working in an alternate um, and we, we, you know, we've like, okay, we're going to do our best. Like, this is all, you know, all we can do. Um, Shelton competes on Saturday without Jordan, um, the guy who was a part of their team. And we get a call from Caleb and he's like, I'm getting in my car. I'm driving to Orlando. We're like, <laughs> okay, we've just like, you know, are you sure? Like mm -hmm. David. And so David comes to us, you know, and he's like, guys, I know we just put, you know, Colson in the routine. I know we put in the alternates and we've redone stuff. Caleb wants to come. This means that we haven't had a practice or ran this routine full out in four days. Um, he's like, Saturday, um, we, but when we did taping, you know, we didn't compete in semis, you know, if you, if you yep. qualified. So we, it was just like our run through, mm -hmm. you know, we're in t-shirts and shorts, getting to do your run through there. So we do our run through without Caleb. Um, the whole team votes and we're like, we don't care if we do it full. Like if Caleb wants to come, he's competing. Like, mm -hmm. we'll do it without, you know, and that's again, just that team could have been like, no, let's just, you know, let's just stick with what we've got. We're hitting, we're comfortable. We were like, if that kid's coming down here, he's competing. We don't care. We mm -hmm. trust. So again, just a special team, a special group of, you know, teenagers and young adults to do that. So we run through Saturday. We don't do half of our routine. You know, every half pyramid is not going. We're like marking stuff. Um, he shows up Sunday and we hit. And um, I just remember the speech that, you know, he gave and the prayer that I prayed before we went out there. And just how grateful we were that he, you know, we meant so much to him that he wanted to come back and be a part of it. And so that year is memorable because we beat Kentucky, yes, but it's memorable because of, of how special that team was and how special Jordan and Caleb's family were to us. Um, I think that's what makes great teams. Uh, everyone remembers the championships, but it's those, it's the memories and the bonds with your teammates that that's why that team was special. Certainly beating Kentucky for me, you know, was great. Absolutely. I, you know, I had coaches, uh, coach at Kentucky told me that I would never basket and I was like I'm not only gonna basket but I'm gonna learn every basket there is and I'm gonna teach your team at camp one day you know like I'm mm -hmm. like so competitive <laughs> and so to be able to do that was just like you know super special for me too I'm the same way if I'm told I can't do something I am going to I, do everything I can to prove you wrong I 100% agree with you yeah so I think I think all those people too you know you yep. gotta have that too and you gotta have that fire on you that you know, when someone says that, that you don't believe it, that you listen to your inner voice, you know, over that. Mm -hmm. uh, something I do want to go over real quick is, um, if I'm not mistaken, while you're at Bama, um, you also have the opportunity to do the U.S. national team. Oh, I did, yeah. Yes. So, uh, quick, I mean, now, if I'm not mistaken, you did both co-ed and all-girl, correct? You've done I both? Did. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, my first year at Alabama, I actually made the all-girl team. Mm -hmm. Um we had, we had trials in Atlanta and that was when we weren't trying out with full groups. You know, we were still trying to like piece it, which was really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and so I made the all girl team and I remember meeting with David, one of my American studies professors, like, absolutely not. You can't miss this class or you fail. Oh, wow. Well, I just made, like, are you serious? Yeah. Well, I didn't actually get to be a part of that. I remember calling Sherry Cooney um, and Roger and I was like, I can't fail school, so I'm sorry. And that was really hard. And I thought, well, that was my one chance. Like, yep. great. So I just started working really hard that year. Um, I knew that was a goal of mine the, the next year, the, the 2011 year, the year that we won. And so um, really lucky to make the co-ed team uh, that year. That was such a fun 
um, competing for your country, there, there's nothing like that. Like mm -hmm. walking out, opening ceremonies and like seeing everyone looking at the United States of America was, it was so humbling and it was just so, I couldn't believe that I was really there. Um, I, every year that I got to be a part of that, I'm so lucky that those coaches, you know, that David and, and Leroy, that they took a chance on me because I know that, again, I'm, I'm not the most talented. I never was. Um, but I felt like I was a good teammate and would just work hard. And I, I thank you for, <laughs> thank you for giving me that chance. I did co-ed in 2011 and 2012. Um, thought I was done because I did graduate in 2012, December competed at nationals and cheered in a national championship game that January. And then um, I was done, but there was an all girl group at Alabama that was right when all girl was starting and they really wanted to try for team USA. At this point, I'd already accepted the job in Memphis and I've, I've moved and I'm working in the varsity office for American cheerleader. And I'm trying to like drive back to Tuscaloosa and stunt. I'm trying to tumble uh, in Memphis. Um, <laughs> it was a lot harder. I wish, you know, I would have had more time just to focus on that, mm -hmm. but um, it was really cool to be a part of the first, you know, all girl group yeah. to make from Alabama too. And I'm so gr you know grateful for those girls that believed in me and that they got a chance to do that too. Mm -hmm. I know it was something, you know, that there's nothing like competing for Team USA. Mm -hmm. So as you guys know, uh, Ryan then transitions and you actually do use your major for a little bit. You go into journalism. Yeah. You, you, you move to Memphis and as you mentioned, you, you're working um, and using that journalism degree. So mm -hmm. as you're, as you're uh, becoming a journalist, yeah. when did the coaching bug get you? When did you all of a sudden be like, I think I might want to do this cheer coach thing? Well, I said I was never going to coach because my mom was a coach, right? And it's like, oh, I don't want to be my mom. Mm -hmm. um, but if I could be my mom, like, there is no other person I'd rather be now. But mm -hmm. I think at that you now, growing up, I was like, I don't want to coach. I think I also didn't want to coach at first because I saw – I saw the behind the scenes work, you know, I saw the, um, the hours that you're putting in doing paperwork that you're doing, setting up meals that you're dealing with parents as a mm -hmm. high school coach, you know, and, and then you go to practice and sometimes you hear people maybe say things and you're like, really? Like all she thinks about is you, you know, all she cares about is you. And I think seeing that made me, you know, maybe not want to coach at first. Um, and I had a really good opportunity to, to go and be the editor of American Cheerleader Magazine. Barcy had just purchased it. It just moved from New York to Memphis. Um, I was so excited. I was living with Taylor Easton. What's up, Rumi? <laughs> and we had so much fun combining our crimson, orange, and purple in our Bama. Well, everything was just crimson and purple. It was just gross. Um, but we had so much fun. Um, but I quickly realized that I didn't want to sit behind a desk. Um, I miss relationships. And I think that's what every coach would say, you know, makes coaching special. It's not the, you know, the titles. It's, it's the relationships that you have. Um, that's what made my team special, you know, being, being on a team is the relationships with my teammates. Um, you know, every bridesmaid in my wedding, I, I cheered with mm -hmm. um, because they're the closest people to me. So I, John White knew that I wanted to maybe coach, you know, it's kind of like, Hey, I think I want to get out of here. He was like, Oh, you could coach some high school teams in Memphis. And I was like, no, like, I think I want to coach college. Like I think, mm -hmm. I, you know, my college coach had a huge impact on like me and my, you know, uh, life. And I was like, I want to do that for people. And so he actually came by my office one day and he left me a little post-it and it was like UAB question mark. And I was mm -hmm. like, Hmm, in mm -hmm. Alabama, yeah, Birmingham, my college boyfriend was there. Of course, you know, I'm a, I was a dumb girl too. You know, I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh, I got to move, mm -hmm. you know, be where my, my boyfriend is. And so I was like, yeah, I'm just going to move to Birmingham. And, um, talking to Nicole Lachere and that, that was like the hardest conversation I've ever had, you know, mm -hmm. telling her that I wasn't going to work there when they, and Bill Seeley, when they had you know, taken a chance on me. And um, I'm grateful that I had cheerleading um, tough conversations before that helped me through that. And, you know, that's something we always tell our athletes that, you know, come talk to me in person, get through this tough combo with someone who loves you and cares about you. Cause it might be harder, you know, as an adult one day with your employer, but, you know, I just told her that I just, my heart was just in coaching. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know, be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Birmingham without actually getting the job, which I don't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so don't move until you have the job. But I am um, happy uh, Hooper and Brandon Prince offered me a position with Ace of Birmingham um, because I, they knew I wanted to be in Birmingham. You know, I called Brandon so much and talked about how I just wanted to coach. And so they offered me a, a marketing and social media position there. And I was also helping coach some of their teams and run classes while kind of waiting on the mm -hmm. UAB position. So lucky that I got it, right? Because mm -hmm. I moved to Birmingham. 
So you moved to Birmingham, you're, you're at UAB, and you're there for three or four years? Uh, three and a half, yeah. Three and a half years, okay. Uh, so you're at UAB, um, and uh, competing, doing the game day, and learning, I would say, the, yeah. the behind the scenes of college coaching, which I always say, a college coach, maybe 20% of the job is actually coaching. Absolutely. Like, maybe, if you're lucky. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, but then... Um, Old, the old Miss position becomes available. And so I know that that's a position then obviously you uh, take. So talk about that transition. So you're just moving every kind of moving here yeah. and here um, and going from UAB to Ole Miss. How was that transition? Well, I met my husband at UAB and, you know, he was working for the football team. And I think, um, you know, we were, we were engaged, we were about to be married and he really wanted a job change first. Mm -hmm. And that's where we, you know, he was actually looking into other jobs and again, John White, thank you, called me. And John like, White's hey. the man. He's the man. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, Ole Miss. Like, that's all he said. I'm like, in my office, he'd be in And for people that don't know, John White is an alum of Ole Miss. So, yeah, yeah, he is. Yes. And I'm like, what about it? You know, I'm like, what do you, mm -hmm. like, I don't know anything that's going on. And he's like, would you, would you want to work at Ole Miss? And I'm like, what, the cheer? Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I kind of had my sights on maybe like, you know, I always knew I wanted to coach in the SEC once I started coaching. You know, I was like, that's my goal. I don't want to coach in the SEC. I kind of had a school in mind that I wanted to coach mm -hmm. at, but I was like, just want to try it. SEC, I, you know, I cheered there, want to do it. So I didn't really think twice. I, like, called my husband because he was actually about to accept another job the day John called me. Like, mm -hmm. thank you, God. And so I called him and was like, hey, did you accept that job yet? Because I might want to apply for a job. Like, mm -hmm. Who says that to their husband as he's like about to accept another job? And what husband's like, okay, I want it. I mean, today's our anniversary. Love you, Kyle. Oh, um, happy anniversary. I didn't know that. How nice. Yeah, and so how cool of him in quarantine letting me uh, do this interview um, while he's downstairs. You guys are probably sick of each other by now anyway, so. He's like, go get upstairs. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I, there was no question that, you know, I think just with Kyle wanting a career change um, and me wanting to coach in the SEC, like, we really didn't think twice about it. Um, I tried to go to the interview, and, like, every time that they called me to set up the interview, I, like, I was getting married. I got married in April. You know, they're like, hey, um, yeah, obviously April, I just said that. And so they're like, hey, um, can you come this day? And I'm like, I, I can't, actually. I'm driving to Lexington to get married. And they're like, okay, what about the next day? And I'm like, I am going on my honeymoon. So then I'm out that week. And then he calls back and he's like, the, the, my boss said, Ole Miss. And he's like, okay, what about, um, you know, this night? And I'm like, okay, I'm in, I'll be there. But then I find out for UAB, I'm like, I'm getting this award. And it's for like, you know, loving UAB and being the most spirited and like supporter of athletics. And I'm like, oh my God, and I'm about to go interview. Like, I can't do it. So I called back and I was like, I can't come. Like, this is a sign. And he's like, what about the next day? He just like kept pushing. And I was like, Okay, I'm in. I'll be there the next day. Mm -hmm. um, I knew by lunch that that's where I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I, I remember just taking a moment um, and I kind of stepped away from the interview and went to the restroom and I was just like, God, like, is like saying, like, there's something here. Like, I could see it. That I was supposed to be at Ole Miss. And so we had just bought a house in Birmingham. We got married two weeks ago and we're like, moving to Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> we're crazy. We're crazy. It worked out. I mean, we sold our house. We didn't lose any money, which is, that doesn't happen. When we just Especially started. probably during that time of the housing market. Yes. And it, I mean, we were just, again, it was just also perfectly planned out that that's where, you know, our path was leading us to be there. Um, so we're just really lucky that, yeah, all that worked out. We found a place to live. Kyle eventually found a job. Uh, it took a couple months, but, um, and he loves his job. So we're so grateful for, for that transition. So you moved to Oxford, take over a, um, uh, I mean, a good program. Yeah. Well, Ole Miss yeah. has always been very competitive, yeah. very good talent. You're in Mississippi, which is a very good area for recruiting and, and getting some good talent. Um, and so you're at Ole Miss and obviously uh, taking over an SEC program. And then uh, you guys, I'm sure, are then contacted about, hey, let's, we're going to do a follow-up here. And we're going to do cheerleader generation. So kind of talk about, so this is now your third or fourth year at Ole Miss when the, when this show happens. Um, actually second. Second, second. second year. Okay. So kind of, okay. I couldn't even imagine doing like a reality show my second yeah. year at Purdue. Like I, but anyways, God bless you. <laughs> so kind of talk about, um, for, you know, that trend, that, that transition. Now you're on the other side, you're a coach now with this, all these cameras and everything. And like you talked about earlier, now you have social media. Now you have all this other stuff that you're going to have to deal with with your athletes. Yeah. 
Um, it's just like competing, right? Like it's way easier as an athlete and it's like way harder as a coach because mm -hmm. you have, you know, no control. And most of us coaches like, you know, being in a little bit of control, but realize we don't have any. Um, yeah, so Lori, same producer, you know, she actually, we kind of talked about it when I was at UAB. Um, like she was like, wow, like you're coaching now too. Like we could do a where are they now? We could come back, see mm -hmm. what you guys are up to. And I was like, yeah, now I'm the one with reservations. My mom's like, let's do it. And I'm like, ugh. Mm -hmm that I want to deal with all of that and I saw how stressed you were and I saw the behind the scenes like I don't know if I'm ready for that or my age and my experience like, I don't know if I'm ready so you know Ole Miss she reaches out and again if it wasn't Lori I don't think I, I definitely wouldn't have said yes um and just like still learning Ole Miss and learning Oxford and you know starting that year two it was a lot you know and having two programs I was <laughs> hoping to be pregnant um you know and then we say yes to the show and and then I really got pregnant and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm I, uh, everything is just happening at once. Are we sure this is what's supposed to happen? Mm -hmm. um, it was really, it was really hard. I'm, I'm so grateful. It, it was a, you know, walking billboard for Ole Miss and for Oxford. Oxford mm -hmm. it showed so many beautiful areas. I mean, Oxford is beautiful and Ole Miss campus is beautiful. It really is. And um, it showed, um, you know, a, a lot of really great kids on my team. I think the hardest part for me was that, you know, I didn't have control over the fact that they only, you know, showed my co-ed team. And I have an all-girl team who's incredibly talented, mm -hmm. had some incredible people, not just cheerleaders, but people on there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as someone who coaches both teams like that, you know, that created a divide. It created a divide between those teams and it put me in a really tough spot. Um, you know, I also didn't get to pick the people that they, you know, featured mm -hmm. on the show. I don't think they could have picked, you know, better people. I think they, they showed great, sto true stories. Mm -hmm. Um, all of those kids that they featured are like just amazing humans and I miss you guys so much. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I didn't get to pick that either. So I think, you know, now I think social media does add to the jealousy and does add to the, well, they're getting this attention. Oh, everyone wants to see, you know, Kevin or Jordan when we go places. And, you know, you have seniors and captains that are not featured and they're like, hey, like, why aren't we, you know, getting to speak at this? Why are they speaking to freshmen and sophomores, you know, people who haven't put in their time and, so I think it was really hard um, doing that at Ole Miss. I, I'm grateful for it and, and everything that it taught me and everything that it taught them and the exposure for cheerleading and for Ole Miss. But it was it was much harder as a coach, mm -hmm. much harder, I think, in today's um, time. You know, we had PR people come in and meet with us about, you know, if people say this on your social media, or like, you know, don't get caught up in comments, you know, stuff. People forget that we're human and mm -hmm. that we're not a character in a TV show. And so I would always send, you know, the messages about that too. Like, hey, if this episode comes on and it looks like, you know, this, like Casey and Jordan weren't really rivals, they're best friends, they're roommates. But if it looks like maybe you might be rivals on the team, it's, you know, it's, it's for the show. Mm -hmm. So we know what really happened. We know what our year was really about. And I tried to, you know, keep the blinders on as much as possible. But it, it was really tough. <sighs> So you obviously at Ole Miss and it, it, a great program and you, you did great things there and you dealt with the TV show and everything and, and all that stuff. And, um, but then uh, kind of out of, the, out of the blue, I was just as surprised yeah. when I saw it was all of a sudden now you, you get announced as the new head coach at Western Kentucky. And um, again, I kind of news out of nowhere. I think yeah. also with, with the COVID-19 situation, I think it was probably, you know, obviously things are people are thinking of other things you know uh, but kind of talk about how did that come up and kind of the decision behind that so when my son was born um last february you know i reached out to well josh Bewley and i he's the all-girls coach at western we're friends you know good friends and we talk a lot throughout the year and i was just like kind of making a joke and i was like oh if uh you know if you ever need an assistant i'd like to be closer to my parents and you know i miss kentucky haha you know and he was like yeah you know, I'll let you know. We're really thinking about it. Um, you know, then in December, he texted me and was like, hey, like, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm not coming back. I don't know if you know. Um, would you be interested? And I was like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I was kind of joking, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but then I, you know, started thinking about it. And I was like, it kind, you know, Kyle and I talked about he, he's in a really good spot with work. Um, you know, we're just, I loved my teams at Ole Miss. You know, like year three, you've just built, you've got yep. all the people in there. Like, this is not the time to be leaving. It's starting to look like your program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hi, you know, and we just hired Coach Kiffin. I'm pumped for football. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, 
I was just, you know, I kind of told him no. I was like, I, you know, thank you for reaching out. You know, he put me in contact with his boss. And I, when they spoke to me on the phone, I just, I kind of got that vibe. They're like, no, like, I'm not interested. And so, you know, I said, thank you so much. I think, you know, I, I thank you for thinking of me and wanting me to come back to Kentucky. I'm honored truly because I've admired this program for so long, but it's just not the right time. So then in January, um, uh, or during two days, actually in December, someone wants to buy our house and we're like, our house isn't for sale. And, uh, they're like, yeah, well, we want to live in this neighborhood. You guys have like the best house in the neighborhood. Like, here's an offer. And <laughs> we're like, okay, no. Mm -hmm. So we countered it. You know, we asked for like more money, more time to think about it. Cause we were about to leave for Orlando and they accepted the, the more money and the more time. And I'm like, basically you're probably just throwing out a number. You're like, there's no yeah, way to accept it. No give way. us this, you know, we'll talk. Yeah. And so they did. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, Kyle, like, you know, I remember I was just like praying and talking like, Hey, if they come back and say that they want this, like we're moving, right? Like we're, we're finding a house in Oxford, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we're thinking. And so we were about to leave for Orlando. We accepted the offer. We go to Orlando, like, okay, we got till March. We'll figure it out, you know? And that's so not me. Like I'm mm -hmm. so like got a plan. And that was the first time I've really just like let go and was like, it's all going to work out. Mm -hmm. So we sell in our house, high school nationals rolls around. Um, Matt and Olivia at Western have reached out to me a couple more times. Um, you know, really investing in their program. You know, they made this a full-time position there. They actually could talk about their program. You know, they could talk about the cheerleaders, Olivia, my boss, she could name them. And that was honestly something that I didn't have at Ole Miss, you mm -hmm. know, and it showed me that they cared mm -hmm. about their kids. They cared about, um, you know, their program. They, they cared about Western and they, they wanted me to come be a part of it. They spelled my name right on things. And little things. <laughs> Which I made a mistake. I'll even admit that <laughs> in the first time. <laughs> it happens. That's what I'm saying. Like, but the, the attention to detail, um, the reaching out to my husband and looking for jobs for him, the, the asking about my son, the trying to make me comfortable. Like, I was like, I'm just the cheerleading coach. Are you sure you know? Like, and, and I'm not that cool. You know, like, mm -hmm. are you sure? I just really loved how, um, how much they really just pursued me and how much, like I said, they could tell me about their program. Mm -hmm. That after, you know, having a super awesome boss at UAB and then maybe, you know, just having some difficulties at Ole Miss, I just really wanted to work in a place that, um, was just a healthy work environment mm -hmm. for my family. Yep. And I think that, you know, dreams change. SEC was my dream. And then my dream was to be in a place where, I'm appreciated. My kids are appreciated and my family, um, you know, can really get involved in the community. And that's where Western happened. I made an offer on a house in Oxford. I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. So I tried to tell God, no, I'm going to do my thing. And he still was like, nope. You know, so we even, we put down more money than the other couple and they still went with them. And that was during high school nationals. Like I'm there recruiting with two of my awesome co-ed guys and they're with me when I don't get that house. And I'm like, Seriously? Like, am I really going to have to move? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to move. Um, and then just by March, um, it was like right after the SEC tournament, um, when things started to go crazy, it was like right before everything got canceled, that I was like, yes, I'm accepting. I'll tell my kids next week. Then everything got canceled. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have an in-person meeting. You know, I spoke to my athletic director. I was like, hey, like, could you give me, I want to tell, I, they deserve to hear it from me. And mm -hmm. I deserve to get to tell them in person. I want them to ask questions. I want to tell them that I will fight for the, the best coach possible to come in here, just like I did at UAB. And, you know, I didn't get to do that. And that was really hard mm -hmm. um, for me because those kids, they mean so much to me. Yeah. Not able to say that in person was really hard. So mm -hmm. I met with a few that were in town um, and told them in person. But um, I had to send an email and that's yeah i could i couldn't even imagine that yeah and um so that was really hard to do and to feel like i didn't get to handle things the right way i feel like i always try to set a good example you know don't have uh tough conversations on an email and here i am sending an email like a hypocrite and i'm so mad mm -hmm. um but i hope they understand that just the circumstances that i you know i couldn't have had them on campus we are living in a circumstance that nobody could have planned for and 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 you know nothing's normal right now yeah, it was just really hard. It's still hard. <laughs> you know, I just didn't get that closure there. And, you know, I still reach out to them and um, love them all so much and, and miss them. And I know that they're in a good spot. Both teams are just um, so awesome. They're, you know, they're really competitive. They got great leaders. You know, we picked captains. And they got, they're in a really good spot. Like, you know, they don't, they don't need me. Um, they'll be fine. And so I, I felt good knowing that I guess, it, you know, I didn't leave things. You know, I left things I felt better than I found them. 
And so I felt like, okay, this is where God's calling us now. Mm -hmm. But now I don't even get to meet my new team. <laughs> I know. Well, oh my goodness. Just virtually, I'm sure. But yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. Also meeting them through, through social media, through emails. Um, you know, I've met a couple in person from a six foot distance, you know, um, and maybe out on like a, in a public area that, you know, we kept our distance, but that it's just been a really hard, um, a really hard time to move and then close one chapter and start another one. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry, say it again. I said, I'm so excited. I just want to actually get started. Yes. Um, so we are close to the, so Instagram Live has a one hour limit and oh, yeah, it yeah. just cuts off. I still want to do Q&A and I still want to talk, have you talk about Western and talk about how you guys yeah. are doing tryouts. So I want to give you that opportunity to, to talk about that. So uh, let's end the, this broadcast. We'll, we'll, we'll restart it. Okay. Hello, we are back uh, for the Second half of our interview with Ryan O'Connor, Western Kentucky. We uh, just got back into talking uh, with Ryan about her just taking the Western Kentucky job. And uh, as soon as Ryan joins us, uh, we're going to bring her back in. Let me just create a title here for her. And as soon as we connect here, we should be good to finish up our chat with Ryan. All right, and let's find her. There she is. What's up? There we go. All right. Well, thank you again for doing it. We're uh, finishing up. Uh, we just talked to, to Ryan about her transition to Western, and that's kind of now I want to talk about real quick is give you this platform to talk about. I'm sure I've talked to a lot of college coaches the last few weeks about uh, obviously tryouts are going to be way different this year yeah. for everybody. Okay. So how, what is your plan at Western? Uh, and what are you guys doing for tryouts this year? So we're doing virtual tryouts, like, you know, probably most coaches are. And I think that's where we came to the decision. Um, just kind of pulling, um, other coaches, um, thinking about that for Ole Miss too, while still trying to make decisions, you know, there and helping with that. Um, and then also thinking about my new program where at Ole Miss, it may, it was easier, right? Because I like at least knew my returners, whereas like at Western, it's like I'm trying to learn returners and, as well as recruits. Um, but we're doing a video tryout. We have our requirements up um, online. You can find the link through, you know, our Instagram. Um, just it's we're really looking for past videos, too. If there's something that you can't, you know, we, we hoped that this might end. But when we set our dates, you know, back in March, we were thinking, OK, maybe by like mid-April, we'll kind of be at least, you know, back in a gym. But then it's like it got extended. Um, so now we're asking for, you know, just videos that showcase you in, in your best light, you know, the best skills. It can be from this past season. Um, we understand that you should not go get, you know, a group together and, you know, break into a gym and try to, you know, get your stunts just for trials. You know, I've had parents ask me that. They're like, well, my daughter says she has to have a video. What am I doing? I'm like, it's okay. Like, you, you can send the past one. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be very strange. I think for all of us, I think, um, I think the best – um, advice I have is just, you know, do your best. You're not unique. You know, everyone is in the same position right now, whether you're returning or an incoming, um, you know, freshman, everyone is having to do this. Every college coach is having to get creative and think of new ways. And so we're all kind of in this like anxiety, you know, together. So mm -hmm. just try to take a deep breath, do your best. If you don't make a team this year, like, please try again. There is a good chance that you slip through the cracks in a video. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, you know that too, as a coach, there's just, there's, we can't tell everything yep. um, about them from a video. So please don't give up if like this year is not your year. Um, my hope is actually that we'll do our video tryouts, select the team, but then when we can do in-person practice that we're still going to add, you know, we're still going to be actively recruiting and, and looking for people to fill um, the spots on our team. Mm -hmm. um, man, I'm excited to be in Kentucky. I'm um, just surrounded by so much talent. Um, just the co-ed high school teams are phenomenal. The all-girl teams are so good. I mean, I just cannot wait. Um, you know, I've already started reaching out to every high school coach I know, posting in the Kentucky cheer group. Like, I'm mm -hmm. so excited to just be just surrounded by just so much talent here. Uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, th these times are so weird. I was actually yeah. had a having a talk with my assistant, Nicole, yesterday about, yeah. I always tell myself as a coach, I, I wish I would trust my gut more because sometimes I question it too much. Yes. And I feel like this is going to test that theory because I really think when it all comes down to it, we just, as coaches, have to trust our gut. Yep. 
No, absolutely. And you're so right. Cause sometimes you don't write and you take a chance and then you're like, you think back on it. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think we really are just going to have to just go with like that first, that first instinct on some of these, you know, videos and some of these kids. And, and then, you know, really, I think going to test us as coaches to, um, you know, can we work with what we have, you know, can we maybe not, maybe we don't pick the most talented team. Maybe we've got kids that truly want to be in our programs and it's going to force us to, to really get out of our comfort zones and, mm -hmm. and find new ways to motivate them. And maybe we're doing virtual practice or meetings or whatever, you know, however that is and find ways to, to get them excited about cheerleading and get them you know, motivated. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, maybe with a team that's not the team that you would have selected in person. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a challenge. Um, I'm always up for a challenge. I'm, I'm ready for a challenge, a huge competitor. So I think that we're all in it together. I'm sure we'll all be no, we are. together, <laughs> you know, leaning on each other throughout this year. I mean, I do love Bowling Green because, number one, the, the Corvette Hall of Fame is there, uh, is the museum. I love it. And yeah. it, it's, it's always on the way to Nashville, and I love Nashville. It's one oh, of my favorite cities. I so. love close. Got so many friends in Nashville. Uh, I love Bowling Green. So, you know, I, you know, I go out and pick up food. I come back. It, it's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I agree. So, uh, but uh, do you have time for take some questions from the fans I, here? Yeah, I'm here for you. Let's awesome. Go. Okay. Um, again, I took some pictures from questions from the previous yeah. uh, recording. Uh, this is from Juliana underscore cheers. What do you look for in girls at a cheer tryout? Um, that's a great question. I think it depends on, you know, all girl and co-ed to maybe like skill specific, but I think the best thing, the best and first way to answer that is I'm looking for the best person who's going to represent our program. And that, that doesn't just mean skills, you know, that means um, like I watch you and always tell them that like I watch them the moment they like come in for a clinic, you know, I watch the way that they, that other people respond to them. I watch the way that they come up and, and speak to me as a coach, uh, as an authority figure, you know, because I'm thinking, okay, this is much bigger than just the skill or the practice. Like when I send this person out to talk to alumni or to go out and, you know, onto the South Lawn through tailgating, like, are they going to be able to talk about our program? Are they going to be able to answer questions? Are they going to be a friendly face to those coming into clinics the next year and making them feel welcome? So I think that's my, always my number one. Like I, I always watch how they interact with other people trying out. I watch if they kind of sit alone, maybe or you know, yeah, kind of a loner in their interview. Um, they can't really, you know, speak and answer questions. So definitely looking for that ambassador. Um, you know, skills are obviously uh, another big part of it. it. It is what it is. It's what we do. Um, game day um, was huge. Um, when I was cheering at Alabama, it's something that I'm looking for. It's why I always do my fight song first. I mean, my fight song's posted online. You've got months to learn it before tryouts, especially with this video. Like. Mm -hmm. don't send a video you know and, and if you're like oh well that one do and if people do send those type of videos then you kind of know what what you're getting from that kid like they'll you know they'll be okay with just being okay and you know i'm sure as coaches we're always looking for you know people who want to be great not good uh, mediocrity is a choice right just like being mm -hmm. great so i think i'm thinking i'm looking you know for that this year just like what their video and how polished it is how much time they really spend on it um in their tryout packet you know, did you write me a one sentence answer, you know, or did you really take time and answer the question? I think some people just rush through and are like, here, I turned it in. I did the minimum, you know, but I'm looking for those things too. Mm -hmm. Skills can be taught, but sometimes those, those skills, those people skills and the hard work and, um, you know, the attention to detail, sometimes that, you know, that can't be taught. So I'm, I'm really looking for that first. This is from copyboy32. Out of the coaches you've had, whose coaching style do you think yours is similar to? Hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, I know who I'm like hoping to be, but I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I certainly, I, I try to take pieces of everybody. You know, mm -hmm. I think with every coach that I've had, I've been like, wow, I really love the way my mom, uh, you know, she always shows her actions, always show how much she cares. And I always want to be an action person. You know, maybe my, maybe my words are different, but it's, through people's actions, you know, like the Christmas card writing, like you can really tell how much time I spent um, to, you know, to care about, you know, the kids that I have. So I like to take the caring, you know, for my mom and I think David as well. Um, I think the attention to detail comes from, from Salim and, and probably David too. And, and just their background at UK. It's something that I learned just being in that program. Um, you know, it's, we don't settle, it, you know, it's not okay just to be okay. And mm -hmm. um, the coaches don't believe that the athletes don't believe that no one believes that there. And we didn't believe it at Dunbar either. Um, you know, it wasn't enough just to hit our routine. I want to hit it 
you know, I want to hit zero. You know, I want to hit it and, and not want to change anything. So I, I think learning that from, honestly, from that Kentucky mindset from, from Salim and David um, has helped me too. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from Jalen. And I think you know Jalen. Uh, any suggestions for applying for coaching jobs? That's a great question. Yeah. Like yeah. How, how do you get into the coaching thing, whether it be high school or college? Yeah, I think, um, I think relationships. I think that's the biggest thing because that's what, um, you know, that's what they're hoping that you're going to be. You're not just going to be a coach, but you're going to be a, a role model and a mentor um, to their student athletes, whether they are high school or college. So I think reaching out, not just submitting your, your resume, but, but reaching out and saying like, hey, like, here are my plans for the future. Um, here's what I can do with the program. Here's what I can offer that no one else can't. But, but you know, reaching out in person, I think, helps, but also just being able to talk about what you're going to do um, with the relationships instead of just here's what I'm going to do as a, you know, X, Y, as skills, as a coach, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. how are you going to build relationships in the community, especially if it's college, like in, in, on campus with student life, with, um, you know, with sorority, with Greek life, like what relationships are you going to build on campus and in the community, not just skills. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, just uh, somebody was just curious uh, in this picture, who are those two people next to you? Um, so that's Anisha and Chelsea. Um, I cheered at Pep Club with Anisha. We uh, cheered for a long time together. Um, Chelsea actually lived up the street from me. Um, she was featured on the show as well. Um, she, Chelsea is a year older than me. Anisha's my age. Okay, hey, there you go. You're watching. <laughs> uh, this is from, that was from Tap248. And then this is from uh, Kristen Freeman. Uh, what is, I mean, this, it's obviously early. You haven't even got to meet your new team yet, but um, what is your vision for the Western Kentucky program as a whole? Yeah. Um, I actually sent out emails to, to both my teams today, you know, kind of about our vision. Um, I sent out a questionnaire just to try to get, um, to kind of get to know them as people a little bit, but also I asked, you know, what are your individual goals? What are your team goals? Um, you know, and uh, my all girl team, you know, didn't make finals last year. And so a lot of their goals are like, we want to make finals. Like, um, and they didn't really have many game day goals. And so I, you know, I just told them, Hey guys, like, first off the lack of game day goals, we got to change that because not only is game day a huge part of what we do, but it's how we're going to do better competitively. You know, we have to see game day practice workouts appearances every time we're doing something related to our program as an opportunity, an opportunity to get better and an opportunity you know, to represent Western. So, you know, I was correct. You know, I was like, here's my, you know, goal. So using game day, um, not only to be the best game day shows that we can be, but to also, you know, improve um, as people in our skills. Nationals, I don't want to hear, I want to make finals. And that's something that I told my co -ed team last year too. I don't want to make finals. I want to make a statement in finals. I want to make waves in finals. I want to make them watch you in finals. Like you got to start changing your mindset now. If mm -hmm. those are really your goals, you know, really, if, if competition is a huge goal for you, you got to control your mind first and then start speaking about it first. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for, for all girl, I'm returning a lot more on the all girl team. I'm um, here, a really talented all girl team with Western. I think, I mean, that's my goal for them. Like m make a statement year mm -hmm. one, like let's get people talking. Um, you know, both teams really co-ed. Um, it's going to be a much younger team. It's going to be a lot of uh, building um, for the entire Western Kentucky program, it's going to be combining. They've had two separate, you know, all girls have been coached by separate coaches in co-ed. They have had different fight songs. They've had different, what they were to practice, you know, one had workouts, one didn't, Like they've just been so separate. Mm -hmm. My goal is to combine our programs um, and have us have a, a good relation, a better relationship between all girl and co-ed and make sure that we're, we're representing Western. Um, mm -hmm. the, the best that we can. So lots of goals, huge vision for Western. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in it and wasn't ready to get going. I mean, just real quick, something I just wanted to uh, mention to you. I, I think, I mean, for me, I mean, I watched uh, Cheerleader Generation. I thought it was, it was a great show and I was highly entertained by it. Uh, I do think that something they really did show was your connection to family and it, it, would, been, it would be nice to be closer to family for you guys. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. It is. I mean, it, I, being yeah, being closer to my mom, I think my parents are always willing to drive and and see me, and they they did several times almost. But um, you know, as your parents get older, and as you get older, you start to realize moments you don't want to miss. Mm -hmm. And I missed a lot when my brother was in college, and um, you know, I still live with a little bit of that guilt. Um, 
And so I'm happy that I can be closer to be a part of his adult life mm -hmm. when I miss so much. Of, so, you know, family is definitely a, a much bigger goal than it was for me as a, you know, just out of college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is from Jen A. Uh, I'm guessing probably in your program, but uh, her question is, do you have an idea of what the practice schedule could look like? And also, which you probably don't, because let's be honest, it's crazy right now, but uh, will you allow girls to formally rush and be a part of the Greek life? Yes, uh, on Greek life, we have um, several members from both teams that are uh, a part of Greek life. You know, the same thing at Ole Miss, same thing at UAB. Um, you just have to remember that, that school is the number one priority and that, you know, we come second. Uh, second only to school, not to, you know, friends outside and not to Greek life. So as long as you have your priorities in order, absolutely. I think it's only going to prepare you more for the next step when you might have to juggle um, a little bit more in your job. Um, our practice schedule, actually, I do have it. And oh, um, yeah, she's actually ho hopeful sending that video in for me. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, we practice three days a week and we're, uh, we have what, morning workouts two days a week. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, this is from Jay Holman. Um, okay. I think, yeah, I think, you know, Jay, yep. Uh, and kind of, a kind of, I guess, uh, taking the next step off of what Jalen's question was, uh, specifically, he just any best advice for someone who wants to get into coaching specifically at the collegiate level? Yeah. Um, gosh, I, you know, I was really lucky. Um, you know, I, I coached at high schools. Um, I had worked with a lot of middle schools when I was, uh, in, in Tuscaloosa through my time in Alabama. Again, I do think that's similar to, to what I answered with Jalen. I think it's about relationships and reaching out. Um, I think, Jay, you got a, you know, you got a really great resume. I think college staff and, and just teaching staff in general really taught me a lot. Um, even as I was helping uh, some of my students that do staff this year um, with their resumes, I'm like, you didn't just work staff. Like, you, you traveled, you were in charge of, um, you know, schedules, you communicated with the facilities, you know, like you're, you're, making sure you're tapping people out if they're not ready to represent, you know, UCA to the customers. You're answering coaches' questions. You're doing customer service. Like, you have so much to offer when you've done staff or when you've, you know, worked with teams like, like Jay has and like so many of our cheerleaders have. Like, you really have a lot to offer. And I think, you know, like I said, that comes from just listening to that inner voice and just knowing that, you know, you do have a lot to offer. Uh, I'll just let you know, Ryan, like, the question box is just blowing up, which is great. Uh, yeah. This is the most questions I ever had from a guest. So congratulations. Yeah. You are winning. <laughs> uh, here we go. Yeah. Is there tumbling requirements? What are your tumbling requirements for Washington? Yes. Um, yes. So a standing tuck um, is in our fight song. Uh, thanks, Ben. Driver. <laughs> <laughs> I see you in the background. Um, so yes, the standing tuck is in our um, fight song. Um, I would say a hand tuck and a round up and handspring tuck or round up and handspring layout or required um a full is not yet required it's great if you have it you know it's the same way at Ole Miss um tumbling is definitely something that we're looking for but it it isn't the biggest thing on the score sheet on my score sheet because I model my score sheet after what we do throughout the year and that includes competition so mm -hmm. um, if you don't maybe have the best tumbling be the best at every other category uh, I don't know the full question, so we'll kind of try to figure it out. Um, I noticed that in your years at Ole Miss, both co-ed and all girls thrived in the game day division. Uh, kind of talk about that, the game day division, and are yep. there maybe plans with Western to, to also maybe do game day? Yeah, I, I loved competing in game day. You know, we were, um, yeah, my all-girl team was the first ever to win, and that was so yeah. um, for them and for those girls that got to be a part of that. Um, I, you know, I preach about game day. Game day is what I love, and it's something that's special to college cheerleading because, you know, in high school, um, Dunbar wasn't winning, you know, football championships or anything, and, you know, it was a lot about is a competitive, you know, high school team is compete, compete, compete. Then you get to college, and no matter what college you pick, you're still only competing once. Mm -hmm. You know, you're cheering games all the time. So learning to love game day and appreciate game day was, was always really big for me. And I think the best way that I could have told my athletes there when I was coming into Ole Miss and maybe game day wasn't a focus for us before. There was a lot of game day. I felt like improvements we made while being there. I thought the best way that I could get through to them since they loved competition was well, we're going to compete in game day and we're going to improve on these skills and we're going to be better at those things. And I think that did transition. I mean, this past year on the sidelines, co-ed and all girl I mean, they were fun it wasn't like I was like reminding them what to do they just they were fun to be on on the sidelines with mm -hmm. and I think that came from competing in the game day division uh if you don't mind a couple more questions here if you don't mind sure. 
Yeah. Um, here we go. This is from Delaney. For tryout videos, do they have to be only from 1920, or can you also put in videos from 1819, which would have been two years ago? Right. We are encouraging everyone to do it from uh, 2019 to 2020. Um, I would also like to hear, you know, if there's a reason that you, you can't um, submit videos from that year, you know, what is the reason where maybe you were injured that year, you know, maybe your, you know, your all-star program didn't compete as much or, may, you know, maybe there's a reason that they don't. So I would just say, if you're really, if your question specific to Western, like, please reach out to me. Um, I'd love for you to email me and let's talk about it. Um, I'm, I'm really big on that, whether you're on my team or hoping to be on my team, like, let's talk about it. Um, there's not a blanket answer for everything. Um, I think every situation is, is unique. So let's talk about it, but definitely encouraging 2019, 2020. Um, I see just uh, from the comments here from Cameron, um, how do you plan on networking with high school teams throughout the state of Kentucky and building relationships for recruitment? The great thing is I already know so many people. Yes. Um, I, a lot of the coaches that are coaching um, were cheering when I was cheering in Kentucky. So like the moment I took the job, I was already sending text messages. Um, like Andrew who works with Graves. I was like, Hey, this is about to be announced. Like let's work together. Graves like, County for people who do not know one of the premier co-ed high school teams right? in the last decade. Yep. Yes. And, and, and then McCracken, I'm like, Jennifer, let's mm -hmm. talk. Um, Bryce who works with so many teams. Uh, you know, my mom, even, you know, her team, I, yep. I've just, I've already started reaching out just, through people that I already know personally. Um, I joined the Kentucky coaches group and I'm, I'm posting about Western um, in there. And, um, you know, just social media is so big now. So I'm really just trying to, to talk about Western and be on their social media and make their social media more relevant. Mm -hmm. um, I'll definitely be at state competitions, re as many regional um, district, you know, competitions as I can. Um, but I, I just, I know so many people already. So I think I already have a better start here than I had in, in both Alabama and in, um, in Mississippi. Uh, two more questions, then we'll move on to the end here. Uh, what do you look for for incoming freshman males? Yeah, very similar to what I'm looking for for females. You know, I'm, there's not really a, a difference there. I'm, I'm still looking for people who are going to represent our program um, to the best of their ability, um, you know, whether that's during game day, before game day at clinics. Um, can you talk to me? Can you have a you know, conversation with me? Can you uh, come in and, and, and be a friendly teammate? Um, so those are always the things that I'm looking for, male or female. Um, the skills for males um, are listed on our website as well. But our, our fight song right now, we're just we're doing a toss extension in the fight song. You are more than welcome to do a toss lid, to do a full up, to do other skills. But you have to remember that it has to be game day ready. So if it's not game day ready, you shouldn't put it in your, um, you know, in your tryout video. Just like we wouldn't put it on the sidelines, we wouldn't put it in our competition routine. So um, that's what, I mean, that's what I'm looking for for guys. Uh, let me just retweet everything that Ryan just said as a college coach. Uh, one more thing I would just highly suggest, because this happens to me all the time, yeah. is just remember when you email Ryan, it is Western Kentucky oh. University. That's right. Not, not the University of Western Kentucky. Nope. Just like it's not the University of Purdue. That's it's right. Purdue University. Know your schools. <laughs> no, you're so right. And, and like, hey, Coach Ryan O'Connor. You know, hey, Coach O'Connor. Hey, Coach, you know, like, have a beginning and an ending to your email mm -hmm. too. You know, while we're on the soapbox about emails, like yes, don't, don't text me from your phone like I'm your buddy. Uh, their last question, uh, which I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, is here we go. Yes, uh, fall clinics, clinics at Western. Kind of like what 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 have you done with your clinic schedule? You know, at mm -hmm. Ole Miss and UAB, I'm sure which will be similar to what you probably will do at Western. Yes. Um, actually, the hope is to have one summer clinic and then um, three fall clinics. I did submit dates, but I was told, <laughs> I was told hold up. Yep, ditto. Because <laughs> you know, we just we're just in such a you know crazy time right now where you know it's hard to plan for the future. Um, I'm very you know type A and I've planned out my whole year, but we all know that it might not go the way I planned it. Um, so yes, we will have hopefully a summer clinic and um, multiple fall clinics as well as um, two to three spring clinics. So mm -hmm. keep following us on social media. I'll put them up there as soon as I can. Awesome. Uh, Ryan, so that's the Q&A part. But uh, one thing that I wanted to end with to talk to you about is family yeah. life. Uh, kind of just talk about the transition now of being a mom in coaching yeah. and kind of, yeah, just everything there. Um, wow, it's uh, um, being a mom is the greatest gift um, ever. I'm so grateful that I get the opportunity to be a mom. 
Um, it's not something that I honestly ever thought I wanted. Uh, mm -hmm. And my mom will tell you that too. You know, I was very um, focused on school and work and, you know, it wasn't even really marriage wasn't even like on my radar. I was very just like focused on, on me. And um, then you meet someone who is, is worth, you know, <laughs> spending the rest of your life with. And then you're like, wow, how could I not want more of that person in the world? And so then kids start, you know, you start to talk about kids. Um, it didn't happen as quickly as I wanted it to mm -hmm. um, or as easy as I wanted it to, but just so lucky that it did. Michael is named after um, my dad and mm -hmm. Thomas, his middle name is my husband's middle name. So two family names mm -hmm. and he is the best thing ever. He is so cute. He's got so much personality. Um, he loved hanging out with all of my oldest cheerleaders. He's come to practice sometimes. And so I hope that he loves hanging out with my Western um, cheerleaders as well. But mm -hmm. um, figuring out the balance of being a mom and coaching is, is hard because mm -hmm. You know, I've got kids, you know, I've called them my kids for years and I put them first you know, all the time. I mean, honestly, sometimes before my husband and I know that's not, that's not right. And I've started to really think about that more uh, since having Michael, you know, I've got to have a balance. Um, Cause I felt like, you know, just being a new mom, I was giving like 75% to being a mom and a, and a wife and then like, oh, you know, whatever I had left to being a coach. And I just, I always felt the mom guilt. I definitely had it. You know, I felt like, man, I should be at the gym. Kids want to go in extra and stunt. Like, I need to be there. You know, I need to be at every appearance. I need to be at every, do everything that I did before, Michael. But then I was like, well, I also have to be a mom. And mm -hmm. son. And so I think um, I appreciate my mom setting such a great example. And my dad, too, with, you know, working and having kids and, and never stopping. You know, my mom took six weeks off and was like, had to go, you know, had to drop me off the daycare and get back to work and um, never had an excuse, never ever felt like, you know, I wasn't, you know, she didn't care for me. But there were a lot of times where she couldn't go to those all-star competitions. Um, you know, she would say, you know, good luck. I've mm -hmm. got to do this. And I never felt like, you know, my mom didn't care or didn't want to be there. In fact, I think I learned to love cheerleading for me um, and do sports and, and do things for me because mm -hmm. I wanted to instead of for my parents. So, yep. I, you know, I appreciate that. And I'm sure you want that in your athletes too. You want them to want to do it for them and, and, you know, not for a coach or not for their parents. So I, I love being a mom. I'm hope, hoping I can be a mom, you know, to more kids one day too. Mm -hmm. But for now, we're, you know, <laughs> we're good with Michael. He just turned one in February. So we're just, we just love him so much. Thank you uh, for talking about him. No, absolutely. No. And Shara actually here in the comments makes a very good point. You were also filming the television show while yeah. very pregnant. <laughs> yeah. And also just like forget filming, like just like being pregnant and coaching. Like my friend Bimo at Shelton did it this year and she was like, how did you do it? Like, I'm, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, your emotions are everywhere. You're standing at practice. Like two a days for me is eight hours, right? Because I have all girl and co -ed. They're doing like four hours. So it's eight hours for me. I'm Uh, let's see here. Yeah, uh, oh, there she is. Sorry. No problem, um, looks like just an internet connection. Welcome to a live show. Welcome to Relying on Technology. Uh, but no, you were just finishing up talking about, you know, being two-a-days and eight yeah. hours because you have two teams and... I was, it was awful. Like, and even just like at Nationals, like, because I had game day I had partner since we were in different venues I'm like trying to run I'm like about to pop I mean I had Michael like three weeks after nationals I was so miserable and just like hot and tired and um props to every lady out there who is who has done that and gone through it giving birth was the greatest thing but the hardest thing and those people who say they miss being pregnant you're crazy <laughs> I like being a mom much better than I liked being pregnant. It was, uh, it was a lot of stress. Well, Ryan, I can't thank you enough. This was awesome. I knew hours would go a little bit longer because, like I said, I, I, you're, literally you. your cheer career has been literally in the public eye since – really since high school. I mean, you've just uh, – again, the original cheer celebrity before that word even existed, Ryan O'Connor – uh, Western Kentucky. I wish you the best, Ryan. Thank you so much. Again, if you have any questions for Ryan, feel free to uh, DM her here on Instagram. Send an email to her. What is your email if you want to give that out? Uh, yeah, it's ryan.oconnor at wku.edu. 
just look me up on social media because spelling my name sometimes people forget. It's O R, not E R. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> happens a lot. Well, Ryan, I wish you the best. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'm quite sure once the world becomes normal again, we'll see each other soon. Yes, thank you so much, Steve, for having me on here. I love watching these. Um, I hope you get a lot of followers and people keep uh, keep following you. You and you wedge me in between Ben and Tony, like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to generate some buzz for them because, I mean, you're, you are the original cheer liberty, Ryan. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm so excited to watch Tony tomorrow. But thank you again for having me. It's such a great idea. I love it. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate bye. it. Have a great day. All right. Bye, Stevie. Mm -hmm. Again, I knew it would be a great talk. Ryan O'Connor, uh, formerly known as Ryan Martin, uh, Cheerleader Nation, uh, UAB, Ole Miss, and now at Western Kentucky, uh, just a great lady, uh, an awesome coach, genuinely, as you can tell, just loves her kids, absolutely does it for the right reasons. Um, thank you again, Ryan, for taking the time. And as she mentioned, yes, if I can find it, tomorrow at 1 o'clock, we have who I would consider one of the legends in cheerleading. Yes, tomorrow we have Tony Nash joining us. Tony Nash coach at Indiana University, all girl, director of USA, of the U.S. national teams, uh, and coaches the U.S. all girl national team. Again, tomorrow, one o'clock, we have Tony Nass joining us. Very excited to hear his story. His story is an awesome one. I've, I've heard some of it, but the great thing about these uh, talks is I've just been able to learn a lot about people um, and, you know, their backgrounds and where they came from and just stories I never heard before. So, again, please join us tomorrow as we welcome Tony Nash, Indiana University, uh, U.S. national teams here on Full Out Chats. Once again, everybody, thank you so much for joining. Uh, stay healthy and stay safe.